Okay, this should be better. I'm getting I'm getting normal numbers. You should be able to see my stream. Okay, what was this? Player carry player carryables. Shows a guy holding a helmet. Developing the look, feel, and depth of a player item handling includes the creation of carryable tool. Setting up key carryable items. Oh wow, you can carry a helmet around. Wow. Transit system version 2, Caritas. This is for you. I don't know what improvements, because it's pretty good, isn't it? I find the train experience to be pretty good. Improvements to the systems that allow players to transfer between various map sections, such as doors, elevators, and airlocks. Okay. <gasps> Oh wait, this is not just like the train system. This is transitioning. You know how when you open the door to a ship and you can just see like blank space and then you walk out and, and it renders? Yeah. I think that this they're, 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 they're going to try and address that. That's yeah. yeah. I think that's what I get from it. Bounty mission NPC improvements. Improving the space bounty mission. I mean, this stuff simply just doesn't work for me, so any improvement is welcomed. Um, ships and vehicles. Is there more ships? Okay, the Aegis Vanguard Warden update. So the Warden, the Vanguard Warden is getting a bit of a do over implementing and balancing the updated base model of the Aegis Vanguard Warden these things are like I think they're heavy fighters and they're drop ships they can be drop ships as well I think the Warden though is a heavy fighter it's specifically used to like escort ships like deep into enemy territories I think it packs a bit of a punch. I was intrigued by these when the um, expo was on, actually. Oh, the Kruger Intergalactic P72 Archimedes. Hey, Mega, sorry, man. I had a bit of technical difficulties. Building, balancing, the Kruger. What ship is the Kruger on? Do you know Zen or Caritas at all? It, it, this is not the one. The Merlin is on the um, Constellation. Is this, is this, is this like on the jump or something? Sorry? Isn't it the Kruger P2 Merlin? Yeah, so what's the Kruger P-72 Archimedes? It's like, it looks like a bigger version of the, bigger version of the Merlin, but I'm not sure. Is it on the 890 jump, maybe? I reckon, I bet you it's on the 890 jump. <gasps> oh my God. Everyone's excited about the Carrick. I'm excited. The 890 jump is coming in 3.6.0. What the fuck, guys? Why isn't this... Like... The center of excitement? Oh my god. I've never seen a picture of it. The 890 jump... For those that don't know, this is the ultimate sex yacht in the game. This is the ultimate luxury. I think it's the biggest luxury ship, no? Yeah. 
What was that? This is the party house party. So this is like, oh, what's that Playboy? The guy Hugh Hefner's fucking mansion. This is what this is. The floating around planets. Is it float? Nah, well, it's a ship. I mean, uh. I'm sure it floats. <laughs> oh, you mean? Oh my God, Zen! You now that that would be amazing if it was like a ship as well. Like you could just yeah. land it into the ocean and it became a cruiser. Oh my God! I see where you're going with that, Zen. Damn, that would be so cool. Put it in the lair. You got to put that shit in the lair, man. What are you talking about? There's a picture of it floating in the, in the water. I don't know. It looks like it's above the water, but it looks like it's in the water as well. I don't know. Wait. Uh. Uh. Eight ninety jump back step. Eight ninety jump. Where is it? I I just typed in Star Citizen eight ninety jump. Went to images and it was like. It's literally on the third row down. I'll link it into Discord, man. Is it gonna sounds like it's gonna cost me? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh what what angle, right? That's such an angle to like is it floating on water or is it flying over the ocean? What's sitting on the top? No, oh, you found a different picture to me. But I'll put the one I'll find. Cars. Yep, your foot is Now, the thing that tells me I think that this is floating, like flying, Zen, is I don't see any like ripples and stuff, you know? Like. Ripples yeah. Are um. Oh my god, what is that? Is that like a proper SIG thing or is that like a fan made thing? Like that. It, that. Yeah. Yeah. Why would you have those two carts there? <laughs> like, what are they going to do? <laughs> when you uh, jump off the edge. <laughs> Drive on the bottom of the sea. That would be good, though, because only land in water. Oh, it was like a sea... You know, you got seaplanes, you got, like, sea ships. <laughs> yeah. Look, look, at, look at this picture, guys. It's not the 890 jump, but... <laughs> Is that like a 600i? Yeah, it's a 600i. <laughs> oh my god. Submarine. Doom. Yeah. <laughs> Doom. Doom. Dude, look in the background of that. Yeah, I know. There's a huge spa like sea monster. Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. Okay. 
Anyway, let's continue on with the roadmap. That was exciting. That was the 890 jump. I can't... Yeah, there's water on Hurston, but you can't go in. I wonder when they're going to introduce swimming mechanic. That would be awesome. So 890 jump is huge, guys. F yeah. Screw the Carrick. Who cares about the Carrick? This is the bomb. Anyway, the Kruger Merlin, brilliant. I used to have a constellation and now I'm assuming what this means, implementing the revised version of the P52 Merlin into the game. I'm assuming now constellation owners can now jump into their Merlin and get the hell off their ship or have a crew member jump in there and, and get the Merlin to like escort their ship, which is pretty cool. Weapons and items, three entries. Apocalypse Arms, Animus Missile Launcher. Now, I love Apocalypse Arms, guys. You know why I love Apocalypse Arms? Because I'm a Punisher fan, and this fucking symbol looks like a Punisher symbol to me. <laughs> yeah, I've got his comics right behind me. I love the guy. Oh, shit. Another pistol. I love handguns. My character's going to be like a handgun type of person, like not a military, you know, like a logistics guy, right? I'm going to have a handgun. I'm going to have Adidas tracksuit on, my hat on backwards. You know, like a cool truck hauler. No, I wish. Mate. No, I wish I did. You know, Spartus and all them do. The that's the science ship. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. You become your own like mobile jump town. Everyone's like hammer hammerheads and shit are on your ass. <laughs> So the Behring S38 pistol, nice. So that's two pistols coming in this year. I'm happy about that. Um, the Max Ox Neutron repeaters. What the hell? The Max Ox. I haven't heard of Max Ox. It's a new ship weapon. There you go. And then we've got the Cortec. So client server actor networking rework. I'm assuming that's all just optimizations and stuff. Planetary ground fog technology. Varying layers of fog on planetary terrain. Nice. Atmospheric stuff. Procedural asteroids version two. Asteroid field generation visual improvements. Distribution and ecosystem pipeline improvements. <sighs> Don't tell it. Mate, when the first animal comes in Star Citizen, guys, I'm going to lose my shit. I'm telling you right now, I'm going to lose my shit. When the first creature I see running, scuttering along the planet somewhere, I'm going to lose my shit. I'll be so happy. That'll be cute. <laughs> <laughs> I will be so happy because I do not want a huge universe of planets that I can walk on with zero wildlife. Several distribution and ecosystem pipeline improvement. You, they almost need like a separate pipeline just for like environment. It's, this game is so complicated. Like, Unification of terrain and distribution maps, ecosystem modeling at a global planetary level, and several improvements to terrain blending. Harvest, harvestable entity spawning. Underlying tech development to allow for an automated system to enable spawning harvestable entities on planets, moons, and asteroid fields. So that's like growing stuff. Yeah. I didn't think that's coming. 
and then more performance optimization. So that's 3.6. If I had to pick my favorite in 3.6, I'm going to get you guys to pick your favorites. Or two, top two favorites, right? From what I just read. Okay, I'm gonna go first. <laughs> the bar bartender improvements <laughs> almost got my top spot, but I don't know. I think I'm gonna go with the 890 jump. And the, for me anyway, the black market. Greatest. The harvest, the harvesting stuff, the growing of plants. Yep. 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 The harvesting entity spawning and the ship rentals. Very good. Zen, have you got any favorites in 3.6? That's all right. I know. Oh, good. We'll go to 3.7. Yeah. Bang. So 3.7 is... Is what? July? Oh, like, oh, September? End of September? So before CitizenCon? I'm guessing. Let's yeah. read this. Characters or one entry. So as I go through it, guys, tell me which ones you guys think will be your favorites. Bounty Hunter Armor. Look at it. Look at it. It's got multi-faces. What the hell is that? Implementing the armor set traditionally associated with bounty hunters in the elk. Everyone's going to be dressed up in this. Everyone. Wow. Wow. Again, that adds a bit more to the lore and history of Star Citizen, which is cool. Location, three entries. Cargo Depot, Space Station. <sighs> I mean, being Galactic Logistics, this is right down our alley. Positioned close to planets and jump points, these depots are the first port of call for haulers and cargo ships can be used to create trade routes and delivery points around the verse. Okay. That is right down my organization's alley. That is awesome how they're fleshing out logistics even further. You guys realize that, you know, like, digressing a little bit you know like for an item to be built they're gonna have like an end-to-end -end, like supply chain where someone has to mine the resources take the raw material somewhere then they take it to a refinery the raw materials get refined into like whatever titanium aluminium whatever then those things are then then taken to like the manufacturer and then the manufacturer makes a weapon or a, or a ship part or something. So, I mean, logistics is going to be such a crucial part. Like at the moment we go and we just trade from A to B and make like, you know, some money. Um, but it's going to become like the, the blood, the blood of this. If, 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 if Star Citizen was a human body, body, this would be the logistics would be like the, the veins of of that body. AI, three entries. NPC shopkeeper improvements, awesome. So they're continuing their work on, on the NPCs that surround us. Improvements to the shopkeeper AI archetype, including additional interactions for the players. Like, to be honest, when I say like my favorite is the 890 jump and stuff, but deep, 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 deep down, all these kind of 
environmental improvements to NPCs and stuff around us is really what impacts you the most as opposed to a single ship. It just brings it to, to life, the game. Um, FPS combat weapon types. The ability for the combat AI to engage the player using a wider arsenal of weaponry. Okay. That's cool. So I suppose they get to use all sorts of different shit like shotguns and rail guns and sniper rifles and stuff. Rocket launchers. Rocket launchers, yep. Advanced gunship defensive maneuvers. I was watching this on reverse to verse or around the verse or something where the AI, if it's in a gunship, will fly totally different to, you know, a fighter, which is awesome. So I think with the gunship, they'll circle around and allow their turrets to um, to get a good angle on you. And that's something I learned uh, when I was flying around with Aussie Bear is when you're flying with a turret, you fly a totally different uh, pattern as opposed to like dog fighting and just chasing a target constantly. You you it I think it's almost a different level of skill. It's easy to chase down the arrow and, and, and um and point your nose at the target continuously. Like it's it's easy in the sense of you know what you have to where you have to go, but with a turret it's kinda of tough flying a ship with guns turrets and let's say you're getting hit you've got to literally as a pilot keep your cool and fly straight and level um and hope that your turret men are hitting the target and stuff so it's just it it's just so different a lot of guys get have a guy in the turret and then they just like dogfight and, and, and the guy in the turret can barely like get a shot off. Gameplay entries, 13. Refueling, fuel scooping. What? Improvements to how hydrogen intakes regenerate fuel. Takes into account environmental density and flight vectors when formulating the regeneration amount. Okay. I think that's kind of a passive mechanic that's constantly working in the background. So it takes now, so the new system will take into account environmental density. So now there's going to be areas that you fly through that'll have more hydrogen, some will have less hydrogen, and flight vectors. So if you're flying, depending on which direction you're flying in, you'll be able to scoop more or less fuel as well. Player locomotion stair improvement. So I'm assuming that's just um, moving up and down stairs. <gasps> NPC healing. Oh my God. Expanding the healing and it's got a picture of the Apollo guys. I've got an Apollo. So expanding the healing gameplay to allow the players to use items with healing properties like the med pin on other players and NPCs so we can heal each other. So the healing mechanic is being expanded a little bit, which is wonderful. Bring on the healing gameplay or the medical gameplay. FPS close combat. Improvements and extensions to the look and feel of current takedown mechanics and close close melee combat, allowing for stealth kills with both a knife and bare hands. Awesome. I wonder if they're going to add something like if you've got heavy armor on, no one can do shit to you in, in like close combat. Because I find it hard to imagine like you punch someone in heavy armor and they get knocked out. <laughs> Even like breaking of the neck, right? You would think that heavy armor suits in the future would have some sort of neck brace where people can't just go behind you and like twist your head. 
I mean, that's what I would ex that's what I would design. But anyway, that is awesome. So close combat is getting fleshed out. Death animation improvements. Nice. Ragdoll. <laughs> Lots of work on the ragdolls. Player swimming. What? Creating basic functionality for the player to be able to swim across the surface of bodies of water. Oh my god, we can all go dip in the lake in next to Lawville. Everyone's going to take their kid off and jump in the lake. <laughs> <laughs> We're all going to be high off Black Widow. This is going to be a big race. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have swimming races and everything, guys. Everything. <laughs> player status systems expansion of the core mechanics that track player status and well-being okay some more stuff in the moby glass <gasps> this will be expanded listen to this this will be expanded to include thirst hunger rest inebriation hygiene and temperature oh my fucking christ oh no oh my fucking christ it's suddenly just become conan exiles all of a sudden yeah, hygiene. hygiene inebriation oh my god um uh, <laughs> Does this ship have a shower is going to be the biggest fucking question any ship seller is going to hear now. What the fuck? You have to buy like the best soap and everything. Well, I've noticed a, a lot. They've got shampoos and shit in like ships, like with like clear like um, brand name. You can focus on them and, and really, you know, like Benny's Noodles and stuff. There's a few, there's a few like shampoo brands. I forgot the names, but it's, definitely going to be a thing oh. oh so cool dude I'm so excited it's like guys let's go do this wait we all got to take a shower first yes we're too s drunk and smelly Wait, I'm just copying these parameters, man. Because I was dying to know what... Um, cargo facts, fuel facts. Getting drunk. Um, delete page. Dragonfly, delete page. Uh, create new page, right? How do you create new page? New page. So, survival. Survival facts, I suppose. Okay. Power system version two, expanding the power system to support systematic gameplay again. Again, so we've had the seat, uh, heat system in three point six or three point five. Now we're getting the power system. I mean, we have a power system, but we're on version one. So this is power system version two. To be honest, I'm 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 I don't really enjoy the HUD interface. I don't enjoy the power stuff um I, i'm i find I, it's really simple to read but i just struggle to read it like without kind of staring at it for like 30 seconds and then i'm like oh okay that's how much power that thing's using like so i hope version two is is the information's presented 
a, a, a little bit more gracefully, I suppose, is what I'm trying to say. PvP bounties. Security forces will search for stolen and illicit items and respond appropriately while NPCs and shops can distinguish whether they deal in stolen merchandise. So this is an expansion of the black market um, uh, edition in uh, 3.6. So it doesn't really say, doesn't match the title. It says PVP bounties, but it's talking about the black market stuff. Security forces will search for stolen and illicit items. So how is that PVP bounties? Well, NPCs and shops can distinguish whether they deal in stolen merchandise. Again, that sounds very familiar to the black market thing. I don't know why it says PVP bounties. Anyway, that's confused me. Uh, cockpit experience improvements. Awesome. Improvements to the play cockpit experience include new visual and audio effects. Awesome. Bring in more colors, bring in some customization so we can change colors, different sounds and beeps and bops. Ship to station docking. Adding the ability to dock and spawn vehicles connected to space stations. This functionality is required for some of the larger ships to spawn at certain locations. Yep. This is getting the mechanic, guys, that is going to be for the huge fuck-off ships that can't land on planets, or nor can they land on landing pad 00 at Port Olisar, because they're just too fucking huge. Yeah. As a logistics guy, the hull E comes to mind. Um, repair, refuel, restock kiosks. The service kiosks will provide players with a more flexible interface for ship inter for ship services. Cool. So I think I didn't really get that. Oh, because you can repair, refuel, and restock anywhere that you land, like anywhere, right? Yeah. So that's that's fine. So what's this? What's a kiosk? So I think it's when you're on foot. In a city, yeah. you can access the same repair, refuel, and restock. Okay. Yeah. Like a... And... So I'm just trying to figure out, like, because... I'm just trying to figure out the nuance of that, like... Today, anywhere you take off, you can essentially just click your Moby Glass and repair, refuel, and restock. So, why would I need a kiosk? Ah, uh, okay. So, so if okay, like jumping to different to a different star system, you had to refuel somewhere. In between, but you can go anywhere else other than this for like one planet. Yeah. Stuff a kiosk on the planet, and then boom. Yeah. Well, well, you you have an R and R there. Yeah. Where you go and you just land and you F two and then bang bang. You don't even get out of your ship. But maybe. Like, yeah, maybe like what, maybe the R&Rs will still be a place where you can kind of refuel on the pad, but other places like Hurston and, and stuff, they'll replace the, the, that ability with kiosks. Anyway, let's wait and see. But you guys get what I'm saying, right? Physical inventories. Yeah, baby. What does that mean? Does that mean we get the Habs? What the fuck does that mean? Design and implementation of a localized physical inventory system with persistence and limitations, allowing for a more immersive and realistic experience. No, I mean, I understand that sentence, but I have no idea what that means. Does that mean... 
that when we spawn, because until you're allowed to go back into your hab, it's all meaningless. Everything's meaningless. That's the big moment when you can leave your hab and go back into it. And then you can put your clothes on the fucking wardrobe and put drinks on. Like, there's no point having a hab where you can customize it, but then as soon as you leave it, you've lost your hab. Like, there's no point in that whatsoever. So, anyway, this is a first step towards physical inventories. I wonder if you get, like, an instance. Like, an instance of your hab, maybe. Ah, yeah, that would work. That's probably what they're going to do. You know, like, in Elder Scrolls Online, that the, your home is, like, an instance? Yeah. Yeah. They might do it that way, but anyway, it's they need to start on that and start they they do on three point seven point zero. Awesome. Um, ships and vehicles. Aegis Vanguard Harbinger. So the last patch was the Aegis Vanguard Warden. This is the Harbinger, which I think is the drop ship. I think this is the ship that everyone said that the Valkyrie has now made redundant. Um, but I think the devs kind of responded by saying the Valkyrie is like a dedicated dropship, whereas this thing is... You don't take as many people on board the ship, but it can... It can you know, it, it's, it's, it's a mix of a heavy fighter and a dropship, if you like. Whereas the Valkyrie is like a pure drop ship. So anyway, they're revamping it. The Vanguard series is being implemented into the game. So anyone that's bought a Vanguard. Wait, I'm pretty sure I saw Vanguard in the game already. Maybe it wasn't the Harbinger. Okay, we've got the Aegis Vanguard Sentinel as well. And the Drake Cutlass Red. I'm thinking of getting one of these. So I have the Apollo and the Red. The Ambulance. implementing the medical variant so this is going to be the first medical ship guys the cutlass red and it's got so much space in the back actually come to think of it i can actually kind of visualize having i reckon you could have even more than one bed in the back all right weapons and items grenade launcher the Behring GP33 grenade launcher. Have we got a grenade launcher in the game at the moment? No. I don't think we do. A frag pistol. Hedeby Salvo frag pistol. No idea what that is. But this will be the third pistol. Every single one of these patches has got a pistol coming into the game as well. A Kronig FL-33 laser cannon. Oh, that's a ship, that's a ship weapon. Sorry, I thought that was a personal weapon. I'm like, what yeah. the fuck? <laughs> the Klaus and Werner Lumen 5. It looks like a submachine gun. Yep. Submachine gun. Alright, Cortec. Large scale shadow improvements. Cool. It's good to have shadows. Server to client actor networking rework. So that's been mentioned in the last few patches. So that's just optimization. Performance optimization. Improved terrain shadows. Shield technology replacement. What is this? Replacement of the legacy shield setup system 
with the new signed distant field tech to allow for better visuals and effects which will be more form fitting and will dynamically react to the ship. This will also improve performance for collision. Wow, I think this is where they're changing the shield from a bubble to being on the surface of the ship. The shields. Which is what they've always intended. They want they want the shields to be on the surface of the ship. They don't want to see the ships in bubbles. Atmosphere tech. Improvements to the atmosphere will include various stability improvements to reduce certain artifacts that are currently visible at different view positions. Includes incorporation of additional density layers to capture effects like an ozone layer at high altitudes that will result in more natural looking skies at sunsets on planets. General improvements in color reproduction will also be investigated. All right, that is 3.7.0, guys. So, my favorite, I'm just scrolling back up. What is my favorite? Okay, Curtis. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Oh, this is tough for me. If you can only pick two, oh, this is tough. Wait, wait, I gotta, I gotta scroll through this again. This is tough. I've got one. The second one, I've got conflicts. Curtis, I've got multiple nominations. Okay. I'm going to tell you my one. So, I think for like exploration and fun and stuff, swimming. Swimming is, is I'm looking forward to swimming. Um, mainly just nothing more than just fun. Fun with friends. Uh, so, that was a lighthearted nomination. And then I'm going to go for Actually, no. All right, no. I'm gonna uh, let's delete swimming. Swimming is just lighthearted. Let's delete. Oh, but it's such a fucking huge part. Like, oh, this is tough, man. This is tough. Okay, okay. Uh, my number one. Let's go because I'm really keen for this mechanic to get fleshed out. Is NPC healing. NPC healing, so healing other players and NPC, so being able to heal each other. I mean, that in itself is not a huge mechanic, but because it's the kind of first little step in the medical gameplay, that's why I'm hyped about it. Um, so that's number one. And then actually, I think I'm going to go down the galactic logistics path. I think I'm going to go for the Cargo Depot space stations as my second. Why? Because that, again, fleshes out a mechanic that I will be interacting with, you know, 
as as a, as a big part of my gameplay. So here I've I've got logistic ships and I've got I'm gonna have healing ships. So uh, those mechanics getting fleshed out to me gets my number one and number two. Caritas, over to you. Number uh, one. Oh yes! Oh my God, I missed that. Actually, you're right. Oh, yep. The what? Sorry. Ah, oh, the cockpit upgrade. Yep. Well, you're right. The cockpit upgrade is going to be something you freaking interface with every second of, every, you know, every day that you're flying a ship. So that's a huge lifestyle improvement. Actually, I like your... I was more mechanic-based. You were kind of more lifestyle-focused. But the survival stuff, yes. Oh, my God. That's so... I mean, I can't wait till I have to eat Benny's noodles, man. Until you got to go shopping to get Benny's... you got to catch the train, go shopping for like 10 packs of Benny's noodles. I wonder if they sell like that. They did. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember there was a truck outside. Yeah, there was a Benny's noodles truck. We're so doing that if we go. All right, 3.8.0, guys. This is the last. So they've covered off the whole year of 2019. Um, so I, I actually haven't looked through this. I've looked through the others in, in my own time a little bit, but I haven't looked through this at all. So this is genuinely fresh. Microtech Collection. Implementing clothing commonly worn by the citizens of Microtech implementing clothing okay so that means they're definitely adding microtech wow okay so really i think maybe the stanton solar system and i could be wrong might be not finished because nothing will ever be finished right i don't want to use the word finish because like i said hurston if i say the stanton solar system stanton solar system will be finished i think by the end of the year in respect to having all the planets kind of and moons present but not finished in the sense that they're not going to add any more villages towns even expand Lawville, expand Area 18, like that shit's going to happen. So I don't like to use finished, but the planets and moons of that system will be complete, like will be present, I suppose. So that aspect of it will be finished, is, is I suppose what I'm trying to say. So anyway, Microtech clothing and fashion, brilliant. A new mission giver, Eddie Parr. Eddie Parr. Sounds like a gangster. Eight locate eight entries and locations. Refinery space station. Implementing refinery space stations. These facilities refine ore into usable material for industry trade. Guys, man, the, the fucking e economic stuff is getting fleshed out this year. We're going to have a lot more gameplay loops. I realize salvaging hasn't been done and that's annoyed everyone, but this is good stuff. This is good stuff. So prospectors can take their stuff to these refineries. This is exactly what I was talking to everyone about before then a refinery will produce materials that the logistics guys can take. What I'm really waiting for is a prospector on a moon 
And like Rav said, a caterpillar landing next to that prospector. And instead of the prospector hauling its limited, you know, stuff back to this refinery, filling up the caterpillar with, with the ore and stuff and us guys taking it back. That's what I'm waiting for. But anyway, refinery space station. So these guys will refine raw materials. Awesome. That's pretty good. That's that's the first fucking location. Cargo space station unoccupied. Implementing what? Positioned close to planets and jump points. These depots are the first point of call. unoccupied space stations and then below it is refinery space station unoccupied so empty i'm assuming like abandoned refinery space stations and abandoned cargo space stations i don't know yeah okay Maybe, maybe places like scary places, abandoned places to go do quests and stuff. Take over the refinery for a bit and, uh, you know, refine your stuff there for free. Yeah. Maybe you're right, dude. Maybe like potential massive PVP. I could see, um, all the big streamers, you know, the guys that can get like 30 guys together, like having huge battles on these things. Yeah. Microtech Planet. It looks blue and white. I think that's one of the final planets of Stanton. New Babbage landing zone. New Babbage. What's Microtech? They're, are they, I know it's a company. Is it like a technology company? In close to protect its inhabitants against the elements, New Babbage is a major social and economic trading hub. Despite highlighting Microtech's flagship store, the landing zone is a haven for other small companies, small tech companies. This initial implementation. You know what I'm thinking, man? You know how there's only 50 people on a server? If they, if they add... Even with, this is like one solar system, right? It's not even like two solar systems yet. Even even with one solar system, you're going to get to a point where you won't fucking see anyone. And some, and like, everyone's going to be empty. Yeah. They're, they're going to have to make it all one or something. Like that. Well, yeah, that's, the, that's called the server meshing technology. But I thought... I mean, the server meshing technology, if at CitizenCon, Chris Roberts indicated like that's coming like way down the roadmap because it's just so complicated. But I'm just thinking there's this kind of balancing act now between the size of the game and the 50 people that occupy it. Yeah. Isn't that so true? Like they can't, like if they came out tomorrow and said we're releasing 100 solar systems, I'll be like, right, okay, well, I won't meet anyone any, anymore. I won't see anyone. Like an impulse fly forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like we'll hook up, obviously, but we won't bump into anyone. No. You do some ridiculous run. Yeah. It's it's an interesting conundrum, man. Development conundrum. Anyway, so we'll have new damage. Awesome. Excellent. So Microtech Moon. Calliope? Well, what I'm wondering as well is like, when are they going to include how fast we can fly? Because technically you can fly as fast as you want in, re in real life. Yeah, I mean, in real life, when I look at like the rocket speeds and shit, the like the the polar like probe, uh, which has got like tiny little thrusters and it's going like two hundred and fifty thousand kilometers an hour, it's crazy. Yeah. yeah, 
but again those probes don't have a human life on them so that's a bit different I'm sure it's easier to fling a fucking lifeless drone around than, than have preserved life but still you can go freaking fast yeah yeah although it is in meters a second at the moment so yeah and that is the speed that the, they use NASA use yeah. yeah they use meters per second um, but I just watch a lot of rocket launches and stuff and those things go freaking fast in space dude yeah yeah and also as a uh, as an aviation enthusiast I, I don't know how it's gonna work man with the speed differences between spacecraft at the moment literally there's not much dude like if you look at the different speeds like one ship's like five meters per second faster than the other. Um, and it doesn't serve any purpose in combat because the differences is not like when you're in a light fighter, I don't feel like I can accelerate and, and kind of make people miss me, like miss shots on me. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I mean, obviously, I'm not the best PvP by any means. I'm, in fact, one of the worst. But I still think that there's not enough difference between the ship speeds, to be honest, to, to really yeah. feel a difference between a light, fast ship and a medium. But anyway, I'm kind of talking shit because we're on the old flight model, right? This flight model is like, yeah, it doesn't really count for anything. So let's wait for the new flight model before I have any opinion so let's just ignore that <laughs> and move on so microtech moon cleo kind of looks the same as calliope oh, no worries mate they look like they might be beautiful moons though and then we got microtech moon U utopia it looks a bit green it looks a bit vomity So all the moons. So we're getting Microtech and its moons by the end of the year. AI, two entries. Creating ace level flight behavior. Oh, wow. That is awesome. And I hope that like feeds into arena commander so we can practice against aces in our own time um fps combat behaviors version 2 improvements to fps combat enables npcs to fight in a more believable way wonderful so that's the two ai editions of 3.8.0 gameplay eight entries dynamic mission system the dynamic mission system allows content to be dynamically tailored to the current environment mag boots player locomotion across a surface while in zero g wait let me go back to dynamic mission system allows content to be dynamically tailored to current the dynamic system mission allows missions offering locations, rewards, and other parameters to be dynamically dictated based upon guidance from the backend simulation and player actions, which in turn enables a more systematic... My God. Caritas, I can see this. I can see you losing your shit over this. Dynamic mission system. So essentially, the system that gives you rewards and locations and other parameters to be dynamically. So, uh, you know, doing quests and stuff and kind of progressing onto the next quest and stuff. You know what, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. The dynamic mission system. Okay, that's big. That's big in my books. That's 
That's probably my number one at the moment. What's mag boots? Creating functional allowing players and NPCs to traverse a surface in zero G as if it is normal ground. Oh, mag boots, as in magnetized boots. Okay, so you can walk on top of your on top of your ship and stuff, you know. Zero G push and pull. Adding the ability for the player to traverse surfaces in zero G by pushing and pulling with their hands. This will come into play in situations where the player isn't wearing an EVA suit with thrusters or if the thrusters are turned off. So this is adding yet another layer of detail in just spacewalking, literally, making it more realistic and immersive. Using your hands to like clamber up a surface. Fucking awesome. These guys just don't stop. Just don't know how they're gonna do it all, but it's just, they have no limitations. Weapon handling while seated in a vehicle. This feature will add the ability for the player and NPCs to use smaller weapons while seated in a passenger seat of a vehicle or ship. Oh, so you can shoot out, out the cyclone, I'm assuming. And maybe you could be driving the Nox and pull out a little handgun. Who knows? Security system. The security system controls who has access to areas and objects based on various factors such as reputation, ownership, key cards and faction. It will automatically issue warnings to people breaking the law and if ignored will flag them as criminals to security forces. Awesome. So there will be areas I suppose like corporations and stuff factions will have their rooms and stuff that you're not allowed to go into in, unless you do certain quests for them so that kind of kind of falls nicely with the dynamic mission system security systems ship to ship docking that was also in the last patch so oh no sorry the last patch was ship to to like space station docking. This is ship to ship docking. So one massive ship docking to another massive ship. Also, I would suspect that would in, that would mean the introduction of like proper pirating. Allow smaller ships to dock in larger ships while in space. Oh my god. Imagine you're flying with your precious cargo and your crew and you're listening to the radio and your other guys in the toilet, the other crew members are cooking dinner and you hear this like alert, like duh, 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 illegal docking in progress. <laughs> You'll be shitting yourself. <laughs> but how exciting would it be? You're like, oh my god, we're being boarded. No, I wouldn't be like that. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, I gotta have a snoop on. <laughs> Vehicle HUD version 4. So they're continuing their work on the HUD this year. Continued improvements to the HUD system to support advanced scanning and ping features, including the storing of results and an interface to adjust the strength of the scan. Yeah. Salvaging version one. Wow. I thought it wasn't from all the backlash I heard. I thought it wasn't even like on the roadmap or something. People were so angry, but it's actually on the roadmap. I mean, don't get me wrong, it was on the roadmap earlier. Like, I understand it's been pushed back, so I understand why people are angry, but I just thought... True. 
Do you reckon they've did it? The backlash, maybe. Okay. Because all those people that bought the Reclaimer, there was, I think there's been hundreds, if not thousands of dollars invested by people into um, uh, salvaging. And look, I think for me personally, I don't know about you, Caritas and Zen, but salvaging is one of the mechanics I won't be getting into because I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to get into every single fucking mechanic because that's just stupid. So, um, I personally, not that I don't like salvaging, I, was, I just had to give one mechanic away. Like, I'm going to be doing logistics, I'm going to be doing medical, I'm going to be doing, um, well, a bit of mining, because I'm going to have a prospector. Um, oh, combat is just day in, day out, really. So that doesn't really count. Um, what else is there? Exploration and science. Like, I just want to see what they look like, Caritas, before I commit to them. Do you know what I mean? Like, I just find it so hard to believe that you can like there's some expensive exploration ships out there right so you spend a thousand dollars or something on an exploration ship so to me that means and i believe that they can do it i just i just find it hard to imagine because i'm not a coder and i just think this game is so complicated that how they need to literally continuously add hidden points of interest and hidden and introduce maybe asteroid fields or even a moon or two or a planet or a solar system even but even a solar system won't last long because as soon as the first person discovers that solar system then people will spill into that solar system but if it's big enough like let's say a solar system is as big as stanton for example they would have the ability to fill that solar system with, you know, let's say a hundred points of interest and players can go and, and explore that shit. But the thing that kind of keeps like reoccurring in my mind is that I know how the people are like today in today's world. Like let's say they introduced the solar system and I'm in a different time zone, right? And I'm like, fuck, I've got to go to work tomorrow. So I'm going to go to sleep. I mean, 100%, there's going to be like 8,000 unemployed guys out there who've got Star Citizen, and they're going to just be like fucking exploring this sh kazoo out of everything. And when I wake up, it's like, oh, everyone's explored everything, game's done. Like, you know what I mean? Wait till the next patch. Like, that's the thing. It won't be that easy? Okay. Okay. You see, this is where... This is where I'm, I'm, I think exploration is such a, like, like salvaging is like shoot something and have a gameplay. Mining is like shoot something, have a gameplay. Healing is like there's going to be, you know, NPC or a PC in front of you and, and you press something and you heal them. And let's say there's even mini games and stuff. That's all great. But exploration is crazy to me. It's like, it's an actual mechanic. It's not a thing that you do. Like you talk about exploration in MMOs and it's just very like, you know, it's just you running around looking for points of interest that other players have already been to a million times. But in this game, exploration is actually discovering something that no one else has yet, which is crazy. How do you, how do you sustain that for years? And I'm sure they can. I'm just... It blows my mind just thinking about it. If they can actually come up with a way where you can have an MMO for like 10 years where there is a exploration mechanic where people are constantly finding new things yet it's done in a way where... Yeah, like you say, it takes months of effort as opposed to, you know, you go to sleep or you, you got to drop the kids off at work and fucking everyone's, <laughs> everyone's fucking explored and that's the, you know, that that's that type thing. So it's just so intriguing. It's just, I just, yeah, I can't wait. Anyway, I digress. We're talking about salvaging. 
it's probably yeah it's probably i've kind of said i'm going to be a miner i'm going to be i'm going to be logistics i'm going to be a, hopefully a bit of a healer and um, i definitely am interested in exploration and and science i'm, I'm keeping an eye on those mechanics um you're going to get the vulture yeah yeah um so yeah so for me salvaging's uh, uh a no-go for me at the moment but i cannot wait i cannot wait to see a reclaimer with its huge fuck off claw just oh man i'm just i'm just i just came imagine a reclaimer sneaks up on a ship that's fully crewed and actually active and it just grabs it with its claw and just starts ripping it to shreds. That's what I, I'm telling you. Someone's going to do it when that when when the reclaimer becomes active. Someone's going to do it. All right. Okay. Salvaging version one, guys. End of the year. Ships and vehicles. Oh, the Esperia Prowler. Is the What's the Prowler? What? Ah, oh, Tavaran. A Tavaran boarding craft. Yeah, that's a bird station. Bird ship for that. Now, the Tavaran are an interesting lot because they've been totally annihilated by humans and they live amongst us. It's a bit of a tragic... Um... It's a bit of a tragic story, thread. Having these people live amongst us, but they've been like, we've wiped out their culture. They, in fact, did a, I think they did a suicide run or something in, in one of the wars that they didn't want to get captured and stuff. So they got totally destroyed. There's been two Tavaran wars. I've recorded some law here in my one note. Uh, the first Tavaran War was in 2541. The, T the Tavarans lost their homeworld, then called Kalith, to the United Planets of Earth. At the end of the first Tavaran War, so the Tavaran War went from 2541 to 2546, so that is what? Five years. The Tavarans had lost their homeworld of Kalith, now known as Elysium. In the first Tavaran War. So these are my notes. They're all a bit sort of all over the place. Um, then in 2603, so about 50 years later, a second Tavaran War. On 9th of March 2603, a faction of Tavarans led by warlord Korath Tai sparked the second Tavaran War. A protracted and brutal guerrilla war for the Elysium system against the United Empire of Earth. On 24th June 2610, after a catastrophic defeat in the Centauri system at the hands of Squadron 42, it became clear to Korath Tai and his forces that they could not defeat the UEE military and an armed populace. Faced with the choice between surrender and death at the hands of his enemy, Korath Tai chose a third option. He ordered his surviving loyal forces to charge through the UEE military blockade for Elysium. On June 25th, 2610, the remains of the Tavaran fleet reached Jalan's atmosphere. The residents of the planet braced for an attack. Instead, Korath Tai and his fleet dropped their thermal shields and dove for the planet. As they burned in the atmosphere, Korath Tai's final words were picked up by human communication devices. We die at home and we die free. And I've got actually a picture of a painting called Tears of Fire which shows a guy watching the Tavarans suicide into the atmosphere. 
so very tragic you know it's a very it's it's brilliant i think i love i love the fact that usually in like space games a lot of times humans are like the kind of weaklings and there's always these like superior technologically advanced alien races and we're the underdogs but in star citizen we're pretty fucking dominant and in fact there's this alien race that's been totally obliterated by us and they lived amongst us so imagine all the kind of mini stories of like racism and you know human guys and girls dating taverns and the complications that you know brings up and the discrimination and the kind of depressing kind of they live amongst the people that destroyed their culture. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Do to parents lay eggs? I have no idea. So, anyway, Esperia is making a Tavaran boarding craft. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm looking at the picture. Those blue round circles, I think they are the docking ports. There seems to be four of them on the side. I don't know what a boarding craft. You'd have to be a very hardcore military pirate slash military organization to, to, to have boarding crafts, I suppose. It's definitely a, a gameplay mechanic where you need 20 friends. So, you know, it wouldn't be like for the likes of myself, but the, again, the big end streamers and the organizations that have, can get 20 people into a ship would, could probably use this to take over another ship, I'm assuming. Anyway, let's move on. The Drake Cutlass Blue Rework. What does the blue do again? Oh, it's Police Militia Patrol Variant. Is it like the police? Like a... Crusader Security. Oh, Crusader Securities. Okay. So it's kind of like a cheap security ship, I suppose. And here it is, the Anvil Carrick. Now, I'm kind of new into Star Citizen, so I don't know what all the hoo-ha about the Carrick is. Um, but... There it is. I don't even think it's an overtly attractive ship from this angle. Squadron 42? Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, very popular ship. Oh, always like an inside joke in Star Citizen, the, the Carrick. So that's coming out. Oh, the whole sea is coming out. No way. So one of the larger logistic ships is coming out. Yeah, I kind of, I like the fact how they do it. Like that's how you haul a shitload of cargo, but I just don't like the look of it. Having like a cargo kind of naked. Yeah. I mean, it's modular as well. You can keep extending. It makes absolutely perfect sense, to be honest, in space. it's. A, I think it's a really intelligent piece of art and design, these whole things. But I just can't, I'm not, I'm like you, Caritas. I'm like, oh, I just don't like the look of it. But, you know, the whole... Yeah, yeah, I could imagine like those, you know, those pods of cargo just fucking getting shot off. Yeah, but it makes perfect sense. Like you, you wouldn't have a ship with a uh, with the cargo inside its fuselage because there's only a certain size that you'd 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 be able to, you know, you'd be able to get. Whereas this thing, you could just and 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 the front and the back, it's like extendable. Like you can add more cargo in between. Um. 
It just means you need protection, really. <laughs> that's why we've got to get Hoggy. That's yeah, it has turrets, but I mean, whoop de do. <laughs> you're gonna be a s sitting duck, man. You're gonna be a sitting. You're gonna be a sitting duck. So that's why, as as our logistic company, it's very important that we become friends with some security organizations and you know have a really close working relationship with them and and, and, and get them and and have some fighters even within our organizations like some people that can get into some fighting ships and escort us escort a caravan of caterpillars so that's the ships man I mean, some crazy ships are coming in 3.8, but the Asperia Prowler, I mean, the Cutlass Blue Rework, that's not too exciting. But then the Carrick, and then the whole C. So, really good variety of ships coming in 3.8.0. Um, weapons and items, three entries. Again, another pistol, man. They're going off on the pistols. For 2019, it's the year of the pistol. So, an Armitage Lankin pneumatic pistol, a lightning bolt. Sorry? Electron yep, electron lightning bolt co. And these are new manufacturers as well. Yeah. I haven't heard of these. And. Yes, actually, they could be Microtech related. Now, that's not English writing, or is it English writing? For the Electron Shotgun, the logo... Is that English, or is that not English? I don't really know. The N is backwards. Hmm. Food for thought. Um, and we got the Klaus and Werner Sledge Mass Driver. And Cortec is what we always like to see at the bottom there is performance optimization. Alrighty, so top two of 3.8.0. So we got Microtech, we got a mission giver, we got eight locations. So Microtech, we got space, we got, we got refinery, space station, which is pretty fucking good. Um, well, we got New Babbage, which is the city on Microtech, which is pretty fucking good. Um, AI, you know, continue. Ace pilot is pretty good. Ace pilot behavior is pretty good. Then we've got um, dynamic mission system. Um, security systems, ship to ship docking. My God, they're all, I mean, every patch is like more and more goodies in the bag like seriously um so my top i know right i mean it was funny last night man like i like i i, I, log, I log in these days without much of an agenda in the game like we're doing the jump town thing now so Last night I flew down to Jump Town and, um, you know, you guys were there and there was a hammerhead there or something and, like he, he killed your ship and then I just went and picked up, um, picked up Zen and flew back, right? And then I look at the watch and it was fucking 2.30am. Two, so like, without doing anything in the game... I was totally entertained for like four and a half hours. 
I mean, only Star Citizen can do that, right? It's crazy. Imagine when all this shit comes out. Like, I mean, I don't think, yeah, I think people are going to be like... <laughs> yeah, we're just going to be like losing our lives in this thing. <laughs> Look, fuck, I need to... I need to take a shower, I need to eat Big Benny's noodles, I need to go buy a new gun, I need to do some mining, I need to, like, fucking hell. Okay, I think... Okay, I got, I got, I got my top two. I got my top two here. So my first one, I think it's, it's just a gameplay loop thing, right? That's going to get me a bit excited. So that's going to be the dynamic mission systems. Um, fuck the, the, the other, v I mean, new Babbage, the city is going to be, it looks sick. The artwork looks fucking sick. Um, And I probably have missed missed out on a good one, like I did last time with the survival stuff. But I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say the. Oh, probably salvaging. I'm not gonna use the mechanic, but fuck, it's 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 a it's a huge gameplay loop. So, I've gone for the gameplay loop theory theme in, in my decisions in 3.8.0 so salvaging and dynamic missions you create us microtech yeah 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 I was gonna pick new Babbage the city yeah <laughs> new Babbage All right, well, that's it, guys. Um, I'm probably going to end the stream a little bit early tonight because I'm just so tired. I just wanted to go through the roadmap. Um, and that was brilliant. Sorry, Caritas? Yep. Yeah, I had a big day today, got up really early and just doing, going to mum's house and cleaning it out was a very emotional day. Um, we did that today and um, yeah, so I actually had to do physical labor, <laughs> so I'm buggered. Um, so yeah, guys, thank you for joining me. Thanks, Caritas and Zen for keeping me company on the roadmap tour. And um, I will speak to you guys tomorrow night. Yeah. I'll be working from home, so if, if you're in the lair, I'll uh, I'll keep an eye on the lair. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll say good day if you jump in. See you later, Zen. Yeah. See you, Kratos. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me on the stream. We went through the uh, roadmap and um, my God, so many exciting things. If they deliver on these milestones for the roadmap, my God, this game is going, there's so many mechanics being introduced, the survival stuff, swimming, um, logistics, you know, refineries, um, on and on and then sh the Carrick, the 890 jump, like 2019 is going to be a fucking huge year for Star Citizen. A huge year. If they deliver on these milestones, if they even deliver on, let's say, 75% of these milestones and 25% and of them get pushed out, it's still huge. It's absolutely huge. Um, Especially the gameplay loop mechanics, the dynamic mission system, the survival stuff like being hungry, 
inebriated, uh, thirsty, that, that system. Um, the refineries for the miners is huge. I know the salvaging got pushed to the back end of the year, but you know, if that comes out at the back end of the year, that's another game, game, game loop that people can partake in. Um, massive, massive additions every quarter if they honor this roadmap. Um, so yeah, really exciting, man. I can see, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to make a bold prediction, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to see, I think, I mean, I can only use Twitch as a, as a way of rating a game and a popularity of a game because that's all I've got access to in my Twitch app. And I can see, I, th- I bet you start more and more people will jump into Star Citizen, surely. Um, so yeah, really exciting times really exciting time so anyway guys thank you for joining me Kratos and Zen tonight from the uh, skeleton crew we bid you a good night and um, we'll catch you later see you later guys have a great day and night